bad rigging almost always leads to awful animation, especially if you're a beginner. But I'm here to tell you, rigging isn't as hard as you might think, and you can actually make quality rigs in just a few minutes. Show me, show me. I've broken all of this information down into three easy steps with a bonus tip right at the end, so make sure to stick around for that. So grab the latest copy of Blender and let's get started. The first step is to create an armature. Press Shift A and under the armature menu, create a single bone. I like to start with a root bone and orient it to the world. So head over to the armature properties tab and under viewport display, check the show axis box. You can also change the display mode to in front so you can see them above your mesh. Press tab to head into edit mode and snap the tail of the bone to the ground by pressing G and then to enable snapping, hold down control. If you look at the top right hand side of the screen, the world axis matches the axis for the bone. From here, you can go about making the rest of the skeleton. While still in edit mode, press Shift A to create a new bone and move it up to the hips. You can right click and flip the bone or press Alt F. For the legs, we can duplicate the hips by pressing Shift D and move it across and press E to extrude a bone for each part of the leg. For the spine, neck and head, select the top of the hips bone and press E to extrude new bones for each. A tip here is to have more bones for the lower torso as that's the area of the spine that moves the most. For the shoulder and arm, shift D to duplicate one of the spine bones, rotate and extrude until you have all the bones for the arm. If you open up the outliner, you can see all the bones that we created, but they don't quite follow the right hierarchy. So to fix this, select the leg, shift select the hip and press Ctrl P and select keep offset. Do the same for the spine to the hips and the shoulder to the spine and finally parent the hips and the root. Once we've done this, we now have a solid hierarchy. You can now go ahead and rename the bones. And when you're done, right click and select auto rename left and right. Once you've done renaming all the bones, select the bones on the left side, right click and select symmetrize. The last step is skinning your mesh. So in object mode, select the mesh, then select the armature and press control P and select automatic weights. Most rigging tutorials will now tell you you're done, but this is the biggest mistake you could make. Not only is this a bad way to rig, it's a horrible way to animate. So let's do it a better way. Step two is creating the control rig. A control rig is like a cool remote for 3D characters. It lets animators move the character around without getting tangled up into all the bone properties. It's what separates the beginners from the pros. Start by selecting all the bones in edit mode and pressing Shift D to duplicate. Move these to a new bone group by pressing Shift M and selecting Assign to New Bone Collection. Head over to the Bone Properties panel and with the duplicates still selected, remove them from the first collection by highlighting it and pressing Remove. Rename these collections to Deform and Driver respectively. The Deform bones are what's actually skinned to our mesh and the Driver bones are what we're going to use for controls. We need to rename these bones, so press F3 and type Batch Rename. Change the object type to Bones and the operation to Set Name. In the name, type DRV underscore this stands for driver and set the method to prefix. To clean up the dot zero zero one, run the battery namer again and add two strip character functions. Set the first one to digits and the last to punctuation. Now all you want to do is select all the bones and head over to the bone properties tab and hold alt and untick deform. This will untick that box for all the bones you've got selected and it will make sure it doesn't interfere with any of the skinning. Next, you want to make sure both bone layers are visible and first select the driver bone then shift select the deform bone and press control shift C and select copy transforms. This will create a copy transforms constraint in which the driver bones will affect the deform bones. To repeat this action, press shift R and do the same for all the bones in the hierarchy. When you've done one side, you can delete one half and in edit mode, use the symmetry shortcut all over again. With the deform skeleton and the driver skeleton created, it's now time to create controls for our rig. This is the step where we'll be creating rig functionality and we're going to be splitting it into FK and IK. So starting with the legs, in edit mode, extrude a bone out from the end of the ankle. Press Alt P and unparent this bone and rename it Control IK Leg. Switch to pose mode by pressing Control Tab and select the leg bone and add a new IK constraint. Set the target to the armature and the bone to the IK control we just made. Next, you need to set the chain length to however many bones are in the chain. In this case, it's two. To be able to rotate the leg, extrude a bone from the knee, unparent it and rename it control leg pole vector. In the IK constraint, add this bone as a pole vector. You might see some strange rotation, so you might have to adjust the pole angle to get it right. We now have an IK leg, but no way to rotate the foot. 
So let's fix that. Parent the foot to the IK control and add a copy location constraint to the foot. Select the knee bone as the target and set this option to tail. And we're all done. To copy this setup to the other side, in edit mode, we can select all the leg bones, right click and symmetrize. Now setting up the rest of the FK controls is going to be super simple since we already created the driver bones. But we do need to add one more bone. So start by extruding a bone out from the hips and rename this to control COG or center of gravity. Parent both the hips and the spine to this control. Now we can animate this while still having individual control of the spine and the hips. Lastly, we'll want to parent the center of gravity control and all the IK controls to the root control. And after that, you're done. To clean this up a bit, add all the FK controls and the IK controls to a new bone collection and rename it controls. Now it's time for the bonus tip. These bone shapes can get really distracting and what we can do is add custom bone shapes. These can be any objects from cubes to spheres and even Suzanne. So to set them up, first create the object and in pose mode, head over to the bone properties panel. Go down to viewport display and under custom shape, select the shape in the custom object menu. Here we can change the size, set it to wireframe and even change the colors. But here's where it gets even better. There's a free add-on that does all of this for you. The bone widget add-on lets you create multiple shapes at once, mirror the shapes across the rig and a hell of a lot more. I'll put a link to download this in the description below where you can download it for free. It will save you so much time. We've only just started to scratch the surface on what's possible with Blender's rigging tools. And if you want to dive even deeper, make sure to subscribe to learn all the incredible things that will make you a pro. So now you have a rig character that you want to animate, but where do you start? Check out this video on how to get started with animation in Blender.